Unfortunately, that's the kind of names you're going to be called when you drive a car like this. What's going on guys? This is Garage Denali and today we are driving a 2009 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. So this is a Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor and the Ford Crown Victoria was introduced in the year 1998 and it was produced up until the year 2011, at least for this generation. What we're driving here is the police interceptor version. So this was introduced in 1999 and basically it is for use for police departments for official use but also it was offered with the Ford Special Appearance Package. So what we're driving here specifically is the Ford Crown Victoria Special Appearance Package. Now what this is, is it's a special package that was produced that was offered by Ford for the Crown Victoria for police departments. So basically Police departments would purchase this car in this format and they would drive the car as an unmarked cop car. So of course, when they see people breaking the law, they would pull them over and successfully do the job. Now, there's a lot of controversy with this for people who are being pulled over by one of these cars, but nonetheless, it is effective when used by police department. The engines that we had in these cars are a 4.6 liter V8 and that puts out about 250 horsepower from 2005 onwards a bump from 230 and it does about 300 pound-feet of torque. Now this is the engine that was lifted out of the Ford Mustang so we get the familiarity of that but it also helps in cost efficiency when Ford manufactured this car. Now one of the gains for that horsepower is the fact that the car got a air filter right out of the Mercury Marauder. That car basically is a performance oriented version of the Ford Crown Victoria and pretty badass in my opinion. So the transmission in this car is a 4 speed automatic gearbox and while that doesn't really sound like it's that effective it actually is pretty efficient. The reasoning for having four gears is that it provides efficiency for what it's used for but also less moving parts so basically it ups the reliability. Furthermore, the transmission in the Crown Victoria Police Interceptor has been especially tuned for firmer shifts and harder shifts as well. So basically, it allows the car to shift uh, much more efficiently when the car is being revved when, for example, chasing a suspect, but also for when the uh, police officers are doing their job and make sure that the car will stand the test of time because these cars are meant to be used for an extended period of time and the cops basically using them, putting it through its paces in all sorts of conditions. So it has to be able to stand that test. One cool thing to note about the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor is the fact that it features Kevlar lined front door. So basically what this does is it offers protection for police officers who are using the car and are caught in the middle of a gunfight because it acts almost like body armor keeping the cops, the officers safe should they be found in a gunfight. Now the primary differences between the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor and the standard one are that it includes an oil cooler which helps keep the oil cool because this car is meant to be running for extended periods of times but it also features a transmission cooler for that same exact reason. Other differences to note are the fact that this car has a 40 RPM higher uh, idle so basically what that is is it allows the car to withstand the burden of when you have computers and all sorts of other electronics that are running, making sure that the car is able to perform and power all of these systems adequately. Now there were two different differential options with this car. There were two differentials but the gear ratio was different. So basically when police departments were placing the orders for this car, they can choose between having highway oriented patrol cars or city use. And that's good because it allowed officers to choose what their primary use of the car is, but more importantly, most cars ship for highway use. So basically, it allows for the car to um, take a beating, more or less, and you know, still be able to uh, take the abuse that these cars go through and be able to live up to the name. The top speed of the Ford Crown Victoria is limited to about 140 miles an hour, and that's because of uh, critical driveline uh, components, and that's to make sure that nothing 
uh, it goes bad with the car, for example, if pushed beyond that, there have been instances where the uh, drive shaft has actually snapped on the car. So the car is governed to that speed, and on top of that, most cars on the road are limited to, you know, like 120, 130 miles an hour. So uh, these cars do get that a little extra bump in speed in case they need to chase somebody, but it makes sure that they'll be able to catch whoever they're chasing. On top of that, because the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor has to be able to take a beating while used by law enforcement, Ford offered a stiffer suspension with this car. So basically, it firms up the shocks so it can take more of a beating when the cops are driving through rugged road or if they're, you know, having the skip curbs or anything like that for emergency use. It allows the car to basically withstand the brute force of police departments. So that's another thing that Ford separated the Crown Victoria Police Interceptor from the standard Crown Vic. So one crucial engineering aspect of the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor is the body-on-frame design. And basically what that means is the car is designed so the body sits on top of the frame. And this is a key highlight because basically what happens is it allows the car to fare better in crash ratings, at least compared to the Chevy Impala and the uh, Dodge Charger, but more importantly, it also brings the cost down for repairs. So it's a nice engineering aspect that you know Ford kept in mind when they were designing this car, and when it's actually put to the test, it does pretty well. So. One critical aspect of the Ford Crown Victoria's timeline is in March 2010 when Ford actually came out and they announced that the Crown Victoria after 12 years is going to be replaced by the new Ford Taurus. Now, police departments have sworn by the durability of the Ford Crown Victoria and in wake of the Crown Victoria's departure what they did was they started stockpiling on parts for the car for getting it fixed and on top of that they even placed orders for whatever remaining Crown Victorias were still being made. So police departments would have access to all these parts and all these cars and they would have them for many years to come before all their cars were just becoming so out of date and so used up that they just had no choice to uh, move up to the new and improved Ford Taurus. So as far as interior ergonomics of the Ford Crown Victoria, now this is a highly mass produced vehicle. So. Ford really saved a lot of money as far as interior, so don't expect to find many creature comforts in here. If anything, in a way, it, it's kind of nice that you get all the minimalistic things. You only get what you need. So you have your dash, you have your uh, gauge cluster with you know the tachometer and the speedometer and your you know miles. But your interface down here for climate control is just three knobs and that's it. Now this is a car that's primarily designed for fleet use, so interior ergonomics are kept to a minimum, but they are effective. Now. One thing that people in the used car market do is when you can pick one of these cars up for, you know, between three and eight grand for a pretty nice one. And this car provides for a very nice daily driver. You know, it's very spacious in here. The trunk is enormous. You got all the power you could ever need in the daily driver. It's a 250 horsepower V8. Interior ergonomics, while it is true that it is bargain basement, it's effective. And for a daily driver car, that's all you need. You know, was out, when I was actually looking for my first car, I was actually considering one of these Ford Crown Victoria police interceptors because, you know, I just think they have such a badass appeal to them. And for a used car, for just getting around and carrying stuff you need and, you know, making sure that you're, you're getting to point A to point B reliably and that maintenance is on the, on the low, this is actually a pretty good contender. And to be honest, in the near future, I might actually be driving one of these cars real soon, so we'll see about that. But nonetheless, if you are in the market for a used car, something reliable, something that's cheap to maintain, something that'll get you around, and for that, you know, police appeal, people thinking that you're a cop, then this is a perfect contender right here. It is true that you can get Chargers and you can get Chevy Impalas and you can even find Chevy Tahoes, but the Crown Victoria is a classic in, in the police world. So the owner of this car has had this car for about 40,000 miles and there's 105,000 miles on the car right now and he hasn't had any issues with it whatsoever. This is a car that you just get in and drive and that's it. Yeah, the only thing you have to worry about is oil changes which are normal, tires and brakes and that's it. And this is a good car for carrying a good amount of stuff if you have it, for getting around town, for you know having that extra V8 power whenever you need it, but you know, it's a fun car to drive because people think you're a cop and, you know, of course, there's people on the other side of the fence who look at you in such a bad way, but nonetheless, 
it is fun to be driving down the road and you see people just getting out of your way because they think you're a cop or the fact that if you come up to a four-way stop sign and even though you may be the last person to come to that stop nine times out of ten you're going to be the first person to take off so of course that you know it really can't help but put a grin on my face every time that happens I'm freaking out man you are freaking out man a car being this size, it actually handles, you know, pretty well. It is somewhat of a boat, and don't expect this car to be any sports car whatsoever, because it just isn't. It's not a sports sedan, it's nothing along those lines. But, you know, the steering is pretty light, so you can drive the car with one hand, and you won't have any issues getting around town, you know. The car is large, so it doesn't really take a whole lot of getting used to, but more importantly, you are able to drive the car effectively and drive the car normally, so that's good. So some of the things I want to highlight about the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor that I like are the fact that it's really dirt cheap to maintain, and that's good because a lot of times you're buying a car and you want to ensure that it's reliable. You know, you don't want to be spending a lot of money on upkeep, and like I've mentioned before, this car, because there's so many that have been made, parts are easily available, and because it's Ford, parts are not going to run you that much money at all. But on top of that, because a lot of parts are shared between this and the uh, Mercury Marauder and perhaps even the Lincoln uh, counterparts, parts are readily available so you don't have to worry about maintenance. Another thing I like is the fact that it packs a punch. Another thing I want to highlight about this car that I like is the interior space. So. You can sit in this car comfortably, you can almost fit a third person right here in the middle between these two seats, but nonetheless, you're not suffocating in here, you have all the room you can need, and while it may be a challenge to park this car in tight spaces, more often than not, you're going to be glad that you have this car for its pluses than its negatives. So, you know, if you're driving in the city, it might be uh, a bit cumbersome driving the car, but nonetheless, you're still going to enjoy all the benefits that you will get from driving a car like this. Of course, there's always going to be people on the other side of the fence when it comes to this, but you always look like a sadistic prick. So, you know, either you love this car or you hate it. And me personally, I love this car. I wish that I had one and I might be in the market for one soon. But it's funny because the look you see on people's faces when you pass by them, either they're completely drenched in fear because they think that they did something wrong until you pass by them and they see you're just a regular person, or they look at you with the dirtiest face imaginable because you're not a cop and you're driving a used cop car. So what are my complaints with the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor? Some things that you might want to look out for are bad paint quality. Because this is a Ford product that was designed in the late 90s and you know it was produced throughout the mid-2000s, Ford quality was not necessarily at its best. So. You pick one of these cars up, the paint's not going to be in the best condition if you're lucky. You know, the clear coat might be starting to fail. So, you know, considering the fact that you can pick these cars up for, you know, five, six grand, no problem, you might as well just spend a couple more thousand dollars on getting a decent paint job, getting a nice paint refresh, because that way you're driving a nice car and it'll have a nice new paint job, so it'll still look brand new and it'll look cool regardless. So, just something to look out for and one of the more common problems with Ford products of this era. Now, going along with that, for another reason why I don't really like this car are a lot of the interior plastics in here. Now, this is a car that is for extremely mass-produced uses and for fleet use primarily, so Ford skimped out on interior build quality. I mean, like, all the plastics in here, like, it's built to stand the test of time, but, like, some of them don't really have a nice feel to them, but again, it's not for what the purpose of this car was designed for, so if you're looking for you know, like soft materials, you're not really going to find it in here, but nonetheless, uh, it is effective, so that's just something to look out for. For me, it doesn't really bother me that much, but if you are a perfectionist or if you're looking for, you know, Mercedes quality, look away from this. Another thing I don't like about this car is the fact that it had a problem with the light control module. So cars that were produced between the years 98 and 05 have a faulty light control module where all lighting with the car will just cease to work. So that includes exterior lighting, like your headlights. So if you are driving at night, you want to make sure that uh, you know you can see clearly and that you can see the road. And if you have a faulty light control module, <laughs> you're just out of luck. So if you're looking for one of these cars, look for one that's a 2006 or newer because that problem has been addressed. But if you do buy an older car or if your newer car for some reason still has problems, you can take it to the Ford dealer where they'll fix it. Uh, they issued a recall for it and they're still happy to address that problem. So 
So you're basically going to be covered at no cost whatsoever. You know, I've always been a fan of these cars, and the, the owner of this car actually has put the steelies the, on the car, the cop steelies, so it looks that much more stealthier. He did a front bull bar, so uh, it actually provides function, like if you are ever in the event that you hit a deer, it protects the front fascia, but also it just makes it look that much more sleeker. And on top of that, it's a slick top. So basically, what that is, is the car doesn't have any lights throughout the uh, exterior of the car, especially on the roof, so when you're in traffic, and you're behind people, like on the highway, people think that you're a cop. And of course, that's all fun and games, and some people get really pissed at you for that, but nonetheless, it's still uh, a nice benefit when you're driving this car that if you're driving on the highway, people just get out of, out of your way. So there you have it, guys. That is my review on the 2009 Ford Crown Victoria uh, Police Interceptor. I had a blast driving this car. I actually want one now, so I might have to negotiate with my friend to buy this car off of him, but nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out Garage Denali for more content. Check out my Instagram page at Garage Denali. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you very much and take care.